All right, YouTube, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. It is October 19th. We got a Saturday and we got game number five of the Yankees and the Guardians. In today's video, we are traveling, um, so we're going to do a little bit quicker of a video, but because it's only one game, it's honestly going to kind of be like the same amount of length. But I have four plays coming your way, all going to be half units. I'll list it out in the pinned comment so you know what the odds are and the best books to look at them if you do want to ride. But if you don't want to fade me, guys, you can always do that. But like I said, four plays coming your way. Before we do that, let's recap yesterday. Um, we have a good night, three and one last night. And again, we're kind of sticking to half unit plays for the majority of the postseason because I truly believe that the books are sharper than ever in baseball. There's only one game to two games per day, four teams to focus on. So we're going a little half unit little bit conservative here, um, but we have the Dodgers-Mets first five under four and a half. That's the only one that didn't cash for us yesterday. It was our most juicy play, and honestly, it wasn't that great of a look. I think in one inning alone, I think it was like the third inning or something like that, right? They scored five runs combined, so not the best look there, but uh, Alvarez, Rocchio, and the Yankees team total overall cash for us. So a nice three and one night. Drop a three and one in the comments if you guys rode with those, but let's go ahead and dive into today's plays. Before we do that, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Let's get rocking and rolling and I know I'm always traveling blah blah I've had a busy summer busy early fall here hoping things kind of quiet down pretty damn soon but I guess that's just life so yes we are on the road again I do appreciate anyone that still tunes in and still messes with the content in a good way when we are traveling but let's dive into it first play here I like the Yankees now. Both of these, again, half unit plays. I put them on the same little card here because I think that they correlate. Yankees money line, Yankees team total over three and a half. I think this thing gets closed up tonight. Yesterday, eight to six win. Um, and, you know, maybe they carry that momentum. The only win that Cleveland has in this series was an absolute nail biter walk off. So it's like. Yeah, I can see why Cleveland should be fired up, backs against the wall, all that. But I think we're getting to the point in the season where the better team may just survive, right? And I do think that's the Yankees today. They have the better pitching, and I do believe the better bats uh, on the mound today for the Yankees is going to be Carlos Rodon going up against Tanner Bybee now. In terms of who's the better pitcher, I don't know if it's that easy to say, but in terms of this matchup, I don't think it's that much of a question in their career. So not even recently. I'm not nitpicking the last time Tanner Bybee, um, Bybee started in this series. And he went, what, one and one third and got hit up and two earned runs. Like, that's not all that great, but I'm not nitpicking that. Um, but Carlos Rodon here, just in, in a bigger sample size than just that Bybee, 92 plate appearances against this current Guardians roster here, meaning the guys on the team, not just the team in general, right? Um, he has a 193 average against, a WOBA of 256. The expected numbers are right there as well. 223 batting average against for expected batting average, an expected WOBA of 295, expected slugging of 368. K rate of 21%, walk rate of 6 I just think that he's going to be in a better position here to help this Yankees team out. Now, I think the Yankees offense, like I already mentioned, is better and is kind of in their stride. Um, even in the game they lost, they cashed this 3.5. They've hit it in every game this series. If we can keep getting good odds on this, I'm going to keep rolling with it. We've hit it a couple times already, so it's like, okay, well, even if we lose this one, it's like, well, that play is still kind of up in the long run for us, right? So Yankees money line, much due to the pitching, but I also like that team total over 3.5 because I think if they get to four, five, six runs like they have been getting, I don't know if the, the Guardians are going to be able to kind of push through that, oh my god, our season's about to end, and put up a bunch. So that's kind of why I'm, you know, I guess splitting our interests here. Because even if the Yankees do score three runs and the Guardians score two, it's like, all right, we didn't cash that team total over, but the Yankees still end up winning. So it's kind of square again, like I've said it all along in this series. Uh, I hate the idea of even backing the Yankees over and over and over again. The one game that I leaned the Guardians didn't bet it myself, so I can't tank can't take credit they won right in that that um, huge uh, big Christmas fashion but to me this is just a this screams Yankee spot but hopefully it doesn't I'm almost like rooting interest for the underdog but betting wise I just can't seem to get to the Guardians I think especially what we've seen from BB um, I know it's by B guys um, especially what we've seen from BB lately um, I guess in this series and then Rodon comparatively so Overall, Yankees on the money line, as well as their team total over three and a half. Moving on, this doesn't necessarily correlate to the Yankees team total over three and a half, but I do like the nerfy in this one. Um, more so for Rodon, like I'm kind of hoping that um, Bybee, I'll please the people that are the pronunciation police. Um, I, I do think that he is a good pitcher. He struggled last game. I get that. But in terms of what Rodon's done, I think it's like four of his last five games, the uh, under in the first inning, which is the nerfy has hit um, the one that he pitched this 
earlier in the um, this this series was one of the two of the four games uh, nerfies that they fit that was in game number two right um, and he's been doing really really well on the season uh, he's hit plenty of nerfies last 10 he's hit 60 percent of them and like I said 80 percent in his last five so I'm really banking on him and then hoping that Bybee can just come out there with some sort of a set of balls and put three outs up on the board without any runs so this is more so based on I think Rodone's going to come out firing um, I will mention and I think this is massive to mention I probably should have said it earlier Rodone's a lot different on the road and compared to you know that first game that was in New York so it is huge is that game number one or two I think it was one right but either way it was in New York he's way different on the road but again he has really good numbers against the Guardians roster so I'm kind of pushing that to the side but FYI, if you do like the Guardians or something like that, that probably is a path that you can take. Um, in terms of play number three, I am going to look at a Cleveland Guardian. I think that the odds here at minus 105, I would play this at like minus 115, minus 120. Stephen Kwan over one and a half hits, runs, and RBIs. Uh, he's averaging 2.6 over his last 10 in this series. He's been going off just one game in which he didn't hit it, but he had five hits, runs, and RBIs in game one. Um, excuse me, that was Detroit, so last five. Game one, he had two um, hits, runs, and RBIs, two in game number two. Yes, didn't get anything in game number three, but then bounced back with two hits and three runs in last night's game number four. In terms of how he's done against Rodon, only three played appearances against, struck out once, has nothing, so maybe he's due, but still the smallest of sample sizes. But Rodon is a left-handed batter, and Quan here, um, batting 319 compared to 292 on the season, 319 against lefties. His WRC Plus jumps nearly 15 points from 130 to 144.9, so that we love to see as well. In terms of his hit rate on the season, he's hit this in nearly 60% of games on the year, but 72% of games against left-handed pitchers. At home, 67 against left-handed pitchers. At home in general, it's great as well, 62. So I think this is a good spot for Quan, especially when we're getting odds at minus 105. Um, does it correlate to, you know, Guardian success? Yes, but like I said, we're taking that Yankees team total over because I don't think the Guardians go out there and put up two runs. I think this could be another four, like type of four to three minimum type of a game. So uh, I don't mind Quan getting a hit, scoring a run, and still having faith that the Yankees pull it out. But guys, that is going to wrap it up for today's video. Let me know what you guys are rolling with in the comments. Also comment seven if you made it this far into the video. And uh, yeah, I think the one redeeming thing here for the Guardians, I guess two. They're at home. I do like their bullpen and Rodon on the road could struggle. But other than that, I think the Yankees have the momentum after one win. Um, they know Oh, they can just they can taste advancing to the World Series. They have what I would consider the better and just more. Hey, let's get back in this offense type of uh, you know I guess offense overall. I think that there's just much more uh, positive on the Yankee side. Not to diminish what the Guardians have done or did, uh, but overall. I think the Yankees are the better team. So like I've been saying, we're taking the better teams in a lot of these games and in the long run, I think that that's going to work out. So that's going to wrap for me, guys. Hope you guys did enjoy. Like I said, comment seven if you made it this far. I'll catch you guys in the next one, right? Peace out.